I want to teach now on the angels and the trumpets, <coughs> excuse me, that they are blowing. <coughs> Already we've heard two angels as, as they have blown their trumpets. And these angels, there are seven of those. And they're not like those of Ray Charles and Willie Nelson uh, when they said that there were seven Spanish angels at the altar of the sun. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. Yeah. And those angels uh, of Ray Charles and, and Willie Nelson, and like most angels, we think, hey, hey, they come to help. You know, they're there. And you and I have guardian angels, and we have at least one. Uh, I've, I've never seen mine. I just know that the Bible says that he's there, and, and he's doing what God wants him to do in the relationship to my life, and he's doing what God wants done in relationship to, to, to your lives. And, and you may ne never have seen your angels, but sometimes the Bible says that we need to be careful because we may entertain angels unaware. So uh, uh, we, may be, we, we, we may be doing that. These angels that are mentioned in the Revelation, these, are, they, these angels are, are a lot more destructive. They're not here to aid in our distress or our discomfort. Uh, they're to bring fear and destruction and death to the inhabitants of earth who do not have the seal of God in their forehead. That's what they are doing here. And the first angel has sounded in his trumpet and there's hail, fire, and blood and the destruction of one-third of the grass and the trees. The second angel has sounded his trumpet and there's something like a flaming volcano that is tossed into the sea and one third of the sea is turned to blood and one third of the living creatures die and one third of the ships are destroyed. And now the description of the third angel shifts from this false, uh, this salt water where they threw it into the oceans. Now it's going to turn to fresh water. And the text is Revelation chapter 8 verses 10 and 11 where it said the third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on, of the springs. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the, star, of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. In this text, it tells us that a great star falls from the sky. So the discovery has to be, is this a meteor or is this a person? A person can be a star or an entity can be a star. And some claim that the star is a personality uh, that, that is, is here uh, on earth. And they try to identify it as some earthly individual. Some say it was Simon Magus. You know him as Simon the Sorcerer or Simon the Magician. He is a religious figure whose confrontation with Peter is recorded in the book of Acts. Some say it's Attila the Hun. He was the ruler of the Huns from 434 until his death in 453. He was known as the Scourge of God. Others say it was Mohammed, this... Uh, Arab prophet of God. And others said it might even be Josephus, this first century Jewish historian that, that, that so many uh, scholars look to for elucidation uh, and clarification and correct interpretation of the scriptures. Uh, it wasn't none of them. They just say that. Uh, it helps sell books and it looks good in commentaries. Not much can be... Uh, fashion from the various interpretations concerning this passage uh, on how translators see it. Uh, but we're going to look anyway. The King James Version, the ES Version, uses a neuter pronoun to describe the, the, the event. They say it fell from heaven rather than he fell from heaven. Uh, I'm, I'm not straining an ad and swallowing a camel. These, the, camel. These, these things are important. When we look at, at biblical interpretation, we have to look at every word 
and, and see how it was. I even went back and looked at the Greek, and I don't understand Greek that well. I know a little Greek, and he runs a dry goods store over on 2nd Avenue. But it's not there. There is not a, a pronoun that is, that is there. Neuter pronouns uh, talk about, about things. They don't talk about, about persons. In fact, in the Spanish language, they don't even have neuter pronouns. You're either a male or a female, and that's, that's all it is. And, and everything is male and female. Trees and, and, and grass and all of that uh, are, are either male or female. But we find out that this uh, infers that it's not a personality. The New King James Version and the NIV, the nearly inspired version, uh, simply states, it fell from heaven. But it's not the it, but it said that a star fell from heaven, uh, not giving any pronominal references or using a pronoun to it any at all. This star, however, uh, has a name, and it's called Wormwood, uh, and it makes the freshwater supply uh, unfit for human consumption to the point that people die. Now, there is a species of wormwood that grows in the Holy Land. It has a strong and a bitter taste, but it's not poisonous. Uh, the plant becomes a symbol of, of bitterness, of sorrow and, and calamity. And so we see that scriptures reveal to us that it falls into the fresh water, but it does not tell us where it falls into the fresh water. What region of the earth? One third of the earth is going to be affected by this, but what one third of the earth is going to be affected? Is it a little bit over here and a little bit over there? Or it, does it refer to that holy land stuff? I, I don't have any idea uh, about the region. Could the falling star be, be Satan himself? In Revelation 12, 12, and we'll look at that again, it says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Earlier in the book, it tells us of his origin, his fall, the fact that, that the great red dragon was cast with the third part of the stars these angels are now known as demons and they were cast out of heaven. And we know that Satan will become a key player uh, in empowering the beast and an increase in demonic activity. With the power, he is going to persecute saints and cause all people to take the mark of the beast, those people that are not saved. What happens when this angel has sounded and, and the, the star falls from heaven? Well, we find out that there is a disaster in the water supply. One third of the waters become bitter. And, and many people die from the waters that had become bitter. In previous soundings of the other trumpets, one third of the waters are affected. We don't know, or I don't know, and I've asked people, what is the significance of one third? I'm going to get to that uh, maybe, maybe during the fifth trumpet that we're going to explain something about the one third. We noticed that one third of the ships was destroyed, one third of the ocean turned to blood, one third of this, one third of that, one third of the other. It's just mentioned throughout the Bible and the Revelation. But we'll look at it. But the significance of the trumpet is what happens when the star hits the water. And it is the fact that people die. The sad thing is that the precious supply of drinking water is altered so that when it is drunk, it kills people. And the revelation has been pointing out during these trumpets and these other judgments of the seals is the devastation of human life. When we think and try to say, well, we need to, need to find out what the volcano is and we need to find out what the star is and all of this, one of the important things is, is that time has run out for people and that they're dying. The seal judgments 
And now there's a continuation of the loss of life. And if you're a mathematician and you keep tallying up the totals of these people that are lost, losing their life, it's a wonder that any person is going to be left on planet Earth. Eight billion people in present day, no telling how many is going to be when, when all of this judgment starts. But we have to remember the words of Jesus. He said, unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. He said, but for the elect's sake, those days are going to be shortened. The bottom line is all of these dead. God is going to bring devastation upon lost people and they will be killed. And according to the world population, they're going to be killed by the millions the Antichrist is going to chase and kill as many of God's people as he can. And, and he is particularly going to pour out his wrath against Jewish people. It's not counted how many will die, but the cry of the martyrs come from under the altar of God saying, Lord, how long are you going to put up with this? You know, they're just killing folks nearly willy and then the judgment that they are dying now and and the bible says in this second uh, excuse me this third trumpet there's more to come that we're going to see that the trumpets that have sounded are are taking lives and and now there is another trumpet the fourth trumpet that that is going to sound and in this fourth trumpet it picks up in verse number 12 and verse number 13, and it said, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, a third of the, the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpets and the three angels who are about to sound. The fourth angel has just sounded and the angel said in Walker County language, you ain't seen nothing yet. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's three more trumpets that are yet to sound after the fourth angel that are going to be worse than the angels that have already sounded. And we have been looking and seeing the scriptures where it said, and, and these many people died, and these many people died, and these many people died. We hadn't got to the fact of where Antichrist is chasing all of the Christians and, and, and all of the Jewish people and that the, he, going to start killing them nearly willy. Uh, Jesus said, unless I'd shorten the days, there wouldn't nobody be saved. It's a terrible, terrible time that people are facing. When this fourth angel is sounded, J. Vernon McGee made a quote several years ago in, in his commentaries. He said, in Seattle, Washington, when Boeing had shut down many of its plants and laid off several thousand men and people were beginning to leave uh, Seattle. On this billboard on Highway 5, some wag put on the sun. The last one leaving town, please turn out the lights. Well, in this trumpet that is sounding, God himself is going to turn out the lights. That's what he's going to do. When this trumpet sounds, the fourth angel should not be a surprise to anyone. When Jesus said immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. When Jesus was speaking, he wasn't talking about something that is symbolic. He's talking about the sun ain't going to shine, the moon ain't going to shine uh, like it did and stars are going to fall from heaven. We do want to take these stars as meteor showers or something that, of that nature. And the powers of heaven are going to be shaken. The purpose in the original creation of the luminaries of heaven was that they might rule the day and the night. There is a necessity of the sun. 
And we find out that it necessitates the fact that it, it gives life as well as light. Life as we know it is necessitated by the presence of, of light. I was listening yesterday, yesterday, Monday, not yesterday, day before yesterday, to a person that talked about being a minister to those people that lived in the hill country, the mountain country of eastern Kentucky and western Virginia. And they were taken into a mine 24 miles underground and they turned out the lights you you can't you can't see your hand in front of your face in total darkness there's really no such thing as darkness we call it darkness it's just the absence of light uh, we have light meters we don't have darkness meters we we measure light and when there is no more light there's nothing but darkness that is there but we find out for us as human individuals, there's, there's nothing but, but, but death when, when there comes darkness because we, we don't survive. Plants generally come uh, with, with instructions. You plant this one in full light. You plant this one in, in, in partial light. You plant this plant in, in, in the shade. And so crops that are, are, are planted in the ground, things that we know of, potatoes and, and, and corn and, and all of those crops that, that we plant, uh, it necessitates sunlight. And, and it takes all of summer to grow or to produce crops. We call that a, that a growing season. If you plant purple whole peas, when you plant them in the ground and they stick their little nose out of the ground, you're not going to get any peas for, for two months and maybe a little longer. That's the growing season uh, for, for, for peas. You find out that some crops, it takes all summer long to grow and produce those crops. Uh, that's the reason that some crops can't grow in the northern tier uh, uh, of our country is because it gets cold quicker and, and we find uh, that there's not a, a, a growing season from, from late spring to, to early fall long enough to produce some crops. Here in the south where, where we live, uh, we find out that, that we, we can grow crops that they can't grow. But further south, we find out that their growing season is longer because they are closer to the equator and they can produce good things like pineapples and mangoes and all, all of those great things that, 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 that I like to eat. Here, we can't grow lemon trees. But if you go to Foley, Alabama, you can have a lemon tree and it can have lemons on it because it has a longer growing season than what we, what we have here. So... If you take one third of the growing seasons and, and, and dissipate that, and it's gone, we find out that, that we have shortened our growing seasons all around the world. And one of the things that, that we have is that we are, uh, we're one crop away from famine. That's all we are. Years ago, we used to have storehouses where we stored grain and stuff like that. We, we don't do that anymore. Uh, we're, we're so, I don't know how to use the word, we're, we're so independent uh, 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 and, and so determined upon the future that we can just say, hey, we're going to plant wheat again next year and so we can have bread or we're going to plant rice and so we, could, we, we can go to all of the Chinese restaurants and, or do whatever we do. We're, we're thinking that next year is going to be like this year. But according to Joseph in, in, in Egypt, uh, he got a revelation that God said, you're going to have seven good years, you're going to have seven bad years. And those bad years were super bad years. Well, God's planning bad years. He said, I'm just going to turn the sun down for a third of its brightness, a third of its power. 
And, and, and I'm going to find, do that. And, and there's really going to be climate change that people can talk about. And we're going to find out that our winter and summer are predicated about, on the sun and, and, and the brightness that we have. If we lose one third of the light of the sun, then we're going to lose one third of the warmth of the sun. Uh, there's no, going to be no global warming in God's calendar. Not yet. He's going to burn the place up one day, but it's, he's, it, we find out that now that, that we don't have enough heat uh, to keep the climate as we know it. And, and you take one third uh, of, of 90 degrees and that's 60 degrees. So in July, like we're having now, uh, we're, we're going to have 62 degrees. It's going to be the high for the day. Yeah, think about that. Wow. Uh, when, when God decides that he's going, to, he's going to change the climate because he's in charge of that anyway. And the effect is going to be felt all over the world. Uh, this will begin another ice age. And it is going to change, and there will be dangers of solar winters. If you can imagine that freezing temperature is 32 degrees, and you take that away from it, and uh, you, you find out that when we think about a 32-degree night, it's going to be a 20-degree night. And you can just keep going, going down. And we have experienced temperatures in that state of Alabama of five degrees below zero. And you say that, hey, that's just a third of what it's going to be. And, and you're going to have something like 30 degrees below zero in Alabama. Well, we, we don't live in Yankee land and we don't live in Canada and we don't live in Alaska and we're going to see that there's going to be a devastation that is there. Uh, we find out that we, we can't grow crops. And on top of that, uh, we got to heat our houses. Snowbirds come, come to Gulf Shores. I got to know Celinda and I got to know some of those snowbirds. One of them told me, said, I can stay all winter in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Cheaper than I can pay one month's heating bill where I live in Minnesota. Now you think of that. You think of our winter highs of being 60, I mean our summer highs of being 60 degrees. What is going to be like when it gets cold and all of those people that live in Minnesota and Wisconsin and all of those places where they live like polar bears, uh, and what it's going to do and the devastation uh, of the heating costs and then the fact that our growing seasons is shortened and there is no food. Uh, then all of us get cabin fever because the sun is not as bright as it used to be. And we begin to see uh, that instead of having a bright and cheerful countenance, we, we get the Monday blots all winter long. And, and, and we say... Uh, you know, I'm not going to holler at this man. I'm just going to kill him because, you know, <laughs> just so, you know, they don't care. And then the moon is affected, not just the sun, the moon at night, because the sun is, is the source of, of light. The joke is told about a blonde being asked, which is the most important, the sun or the moon? And she said, while the moon is most important because it shines at night when you need it the most, You'll have to think about that to, 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 to get that. We know that, that the moon is just a reflection of the sun, and that's all it is. But, but, but they are there, and, and they shine at night when it's needed most. But that's just a joke. But when it, it is happening with this trumpet, it isn't a joke at all. Here is the, 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 the crux and, and the core of the whole matter, not just because of hunger and starvation and devastation, because of one third of the sun being gone and then one third of the, the moon being gone, people know that the heavens are the stabilizing factor in the universe. The world that we know as the heaven 
is called a cosmos in the Bible. The, the word cosmos means an ordered system. We get our word cosmetics from that. Cosmetics is to take chaos and make order and confusion out of, uh, out of take go, confusion and, and make order out of it. We, we just paint and powder. Men have to stay ugly. Women can fix themselves with cosmetics, and, and they do a wonderful job because if the barn needs painting, just go ahead and paint it, you know. Uh, but, but we have an ordered system, and, and I don't mean to bore you with, with, with things uh, of science, but our Julian year, as used in astronomy and other sciences, is a unit defined as 365 and one quarter days. And that's days of 86,400 seconds each. So we find out that they are so exact that you can set your watch by th them. And a year is 365 days 2,425 ten thousandths of a second. Every year, it's that way. We just say it's 365 and one quarter, and every four years, we have a leap year to get our calendar corrected. But it's been doing that, and we've been counting on that. Every 30 days, we're going to have a full moon. Every 365 days we're going to, and a quarter, we're going to have a whole year. And it's down to 10 thousandths of a second every year. It comes back to the same old point. And so when this starts to fail, when people said, there's disorder in the sun and the moon and the stars, what can be trusted anymore? And you can see that the powers of heaven are shaken. And they start changing. And nature, as they call it, has lost its grip. It doesn't work right anymore. In addition to all that has been happening, they say the whole universe is screwed up, and it's not working like it used to. Just a few days ago, there was an eclipse of the sun. It didn't last but just a little while. You know all the height that led up to that and all of that. But you know the fear that some people experienced when they saw that the moon blocked out the light of the sun. People actually became hysterical. If you were there, did you feel the temperature change when it happened? Well, it did happen, and the temperature dropped. Can you imagine when one-third of it is gone and stays gone all the time? I'm not going to be there. You tell me how it is if you don't make it. But uh, us church people are gone the thing that is that, that we are instructed to be great witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ and win as many people as we can so that they will not experience this kind of thing that is happening on the earth. Any questions? Yes. They, they, they translate that different. I didn't write the Bible and I don't interpret it. I just, I just grab what people says. And, and if you have a translation, what, it, what translation are you using, by the way? The NIV. The NIV, nearly inspired version. Yeah. Uh, that's the way that it's translated by, by some translators. 
And I didn't pay any attention to that because most people just just pass over that. So uh, uh, that's I, I I can't explain it, Barbara. It it's you know it's just a difference in translations. Any others? Clear as noonday mud, huh? Uh, it's terrible. Uh, but but you remember what he said. He said, now the fourth angel is sounded, and, and, and here, here's coming the bad part, is what the angel is saying. He said, it's going to get worse. We're going to talk about the fifth angel next week, and, and it'll probably take the whole session ju just to do that because there's so many questions that need to be answered about that. Hey, it's good to see you. I want you to have a great fourth. Remember, he that goes forth with the fifth on the fourth may not come forth on the fifth. <laughs> Let me pray for us, okay? Father, thank you for your blessings to us today. It's such a great thing to be a senior adult. Lord, you've blessed us with, with the ability to be here. And Lord, these people have come because uh, of their interest in, in your word. Lord, I pray you bless them. Open their eyes that they might see and, and be drawn closer to you and, and say, Lord, thank you for salvation that you have given to us. And you've given it to us freely because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Bless us and we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.